Hi, and welcome to class today. Today we're going to be going over the major foreign and domestic policy concerns from John Adams' presidency. At the end of the video, there are going to be three things you'll need to be able to tell me. So let's get started. While you're watching the video today, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to leave them in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you can be notified about more history videos coming your way. By the end of the video, there are three questions you'll need to be able to answer. First, what was the XYZ affair? Second, what were the Alien and Sedition Acts? And third, what were the Virginia and Kentucky Resolutions? John Adams was the second president of the United States. He was elected after Washington stepped down from office in 1796 and was our first single-term president. During the election of 1796, we begin to see clear divisions in the young United States and the emergence of political parties. John Adams represented the Federalist Party, while Thomas Jefferson represented the Democratic Republican Party. Adams won many of the northern states, while Jefferson won most of the south. In the end, John Adams won 51% of the electoral vote, becoming the first and only Federalist president. At the time, elections were held differently than they are today. John Adams got a majority of the electoral votes, so he became president. We still do that today. But John Adams didn't run with a running mate like presidents do today. Instead, the vice president was selected by the person who got the second most electoral votes. So Adams' vice president became Thomas Jefferson, a Democratic Republican. Can you imagine if the president and the vice president were from two different political parties today? <laughs> things would not go well, and it didn't then either. We'll come back to this later in the video. We're going to start by focusing on the major foreign policy issue during Adams' presidency. Remember, foreign policy are the things that impact the United States and other countries. The major foreign policy event that happened during Adams' presidency was the XYZ affair. Think back to Washington's presidency. Britain was impressing or kidnapping American sailors. To solve this issue, Britain and the United States signed Jay's Treaty. This made the French angry because they viewed the treaty as the United States siding with Britain while Britain and France were at war. The US claimed to be neutral, but they were signing treaties with Britain that helped trade between the two countries? So France retaliated by impressing American sailors. John Adams sent three diplomats to France to try and negotiate peace and avoid war. He was trying to follow Washington's advice to stay neutral and stay out of affairs in Europe. During the meeting, the French diplomats demanded a bribe from the Americans to stop the impressment of sailors. Not the best plan they could have come up with. American newspapers began publishing what the French had done, referring to the French diplomats as X, Y, and Z hence calling it the XYZ affair. Americans were outraged, insulted by the demands. People cried millions for defense, not one cent for tribute, meaning they would rather spend millions fighting a war than pay the French bribe. Washington himself was even ready to come out of retirement to fight the French. Months later, the diplomats met again and were able to reach a peace agreement. Even though they didn't go to war, the XYZ affair still had a major impact on politics at home. Federalists began to see immigrants, especially those from France, as possible threats and spies leading a French invasion. As a response to this fear, the Federalists in Congress passed the Alien and Sedition Acts. These were a series of laws that were designed in part to strengthen the power of the Federalists and weaken the Democratic Republicans who were led by Jefferson. The Alien Acts did three things. First, they extended the time immigrants had to live in the United States before they could apply for citizenship from five years to 14 years. 
Second, they gave Congress the power to arrest or deport any male citizen from a foreign country with which the United States was at war. This means that if the U.S. had gone to war with France, Congress could arrest or deport any male French immigrant even if they had not broken the law. And finally, they gave the president the power to deport any non-citizen suspected of plotting against the U.S. for the next two years. Because the United States didn't end up going to war with anyone, and due to the time constraints on the Alien Acts, no immigrants were actually deported. However, because most immigrants supported the Democratic Republican Party, party growth slowed as a result of the Alien Acts. While the Alien Acts were controversial, the Sedition Act became the most infamous part of these laws. The Sedition Act made it illegal to publish anything that criticized the president, Congress, or the laws it created. Interestingly enough, the vice president was not protected from criticism. Remember, the vice president was Thomas Jefferson, who was a Democratic Republican and not a Federalist. This seems a bit fishy. In response to the Alien and Sedition Acts, Jefferson and James Madison, another prominent Democratic Republican, wrote the Virginia and Kentucky Resolutions. These argued that the government's power was limited to only what the Constitution said it could do. Since the Constitution did not give the federal government power to limit immigration or the press, their actions were unconstitutional. The Sedition Acts were a direct violation of the First Amendment protection of freedom of the press. And since the Alien and Sedition Acts were unconstitutional, the states had the right to nullify or legally overturn the Alien and Sedition Acts. The Virginia and Kentucky resolutions would become very important because they were the first instance of the doctrine of nullification. This idea that the states can nullify federal laws will come back again and again as the U.S. inches closer and closer to the Civil War. More on that in later videos, and I will see you in class.